Hannah. Say my mind. It's me, Stuart, and today I'm going to make another book review. See here is my little frowny little sister. He's a bit grumpy in the morning. And well, today we're going to make a little book review. See, she's still three months old. <laughs> okay, me don't cry now. Okay, so today, back to the book review. Our book today is The Cat Who Went to Heaven. It was a bright morning, but rather gloomy too, as the artist didn't have any money. No one wanted to buy anything, and no one bought his paintings at all. It was sad for him, and he was hungry, he was famished. He had sent his housewife, he had sent the little maid over there, the old maid who, had, who he had hired, with their last copper coin so that they could go and get something to eat. It wasn't easy and it was hard for them. But when the housewife came, when the maid came, <gasps> she didn't bring any food. What? The artist was mad at her. When she opened the little bamboo basket that she used to go to the market, inside was a three colored cat. According to them, in that into the Hindus, three colored cats were really really rare. And especially three colored cats were very valuable. And it was lucky because this three colored cat was the eldest daughter of the chief's cat. And the chief's always chief always gets good cats. It was just such a cute cat like my little sister here. It was so adorable. So adorable. You ain't speaking to me. So, back to the story. As we were talking, he suddenly stopped an artist came. The chief of the Hindu temple. The Buddhist temple, sorry. And what did he say? He said, Sir, today we want to celebrate. We want to give a farewell art or a tapestry and we want to give something that would help. We want to give it to the Buddha and hang it on the temple so the generations after generations would see it. What was he going to do? It wasn't very easy, it wasn't difficult but what could he do? So he thought he should just draw the gods and the immortals that came to say farewell to Buddha. First, he drew the snail. A humble creature it was, but when the Buddha was there thinking and meditating, they stretched out and made a shade for him, but they themselves sacrificed themselves. They were humble. Even though they were small, they still made a great impact. The elephant found ten weary men who had been walking in the desert because they had been drowned. They had been kicked out of the kingdom and four of them had died of starvation and water and dehydration. It was just really sad. But Buddha, quote unquote, in this elephant form had said, Do not worry, there you shall find a cle the clearest lake you have ever seen. In parenthesis, actually, it was his own little drowsy lake. And there you shall find a fallen elephant eat its meat and drink from the clearest lake, and you shall get enough energy to cross the desert. So off he went in a burning sense after the man and threw himself down into the cavern. So was Siddhartha's horse. Siddhartha's horse had been really loyal. But his horse had died in battle. His horse had been so loyal to sacrifice himself. Then the Buddha went and went and incarnate and reincarnated into a buffalo. 
This buffalo was really strong indeed. Very, very strong. Yes, when I say strong, I mean very strong. He could pull a hundred carts full of stones. It was weird. It couldn't be possible. But his master, who was a poor man, made beds. Yes, he made beds. And after he made beds with other people, he got rich. All because of this Buddha who went and had been in a buffalo's form. The dog who saved the village from goblins, the deer who had, ge who had been generous, and the ape who had sacrificed himself many, many times. All the animals would said farewell. But he couldn't draw Good Fortune, which was his cat's name. Why, you might ask? Because the cat did not say farewell to Buddha. And that meant that if the cat didn't say farewell to Buddha, then he couldn't be drawn in the farewell picture. But at last, Good Fortune had been meowing and meowing and always asking, Oh, no. How is this going to happen? But at last, at last, at last, the artist drew Good Fortune. <laughs> good Fortune finally come down. Like this little baby cool was very noisy. Alright. So at last at last <laughs> this little baby is very noisy. So at last he drew good fortune. And good fortune was too happy to live another minute and dropped dead and died. So at last good fortune died. But the artist, the temple, still rejected it. But in the morning, a miracle happened. His picture wasn't just the Buddha there, but the Buddha reclining his hand on top of good heaven. And finally, the artist lived happily ever after. I would recommend this book to be ages 10 to 20. Please subscribe, like, and press notifications bell and press all and get updated to all the latest videos on Simon Run. Thanks for watching! I believe that this book does- wait, but before we finish the video, I want to tell you something. This book does not fit my own value, but I think that this book's value may fit other people's value. Okay, so over here we shall end. Wait for tomorrow's book review. Thanks for watching! Oh wait!